Hey guys, this is Wonder here at Face It Land Day 2. I'm here with Kadian. How are you doing? I'm fine, man. Thank you. What about you? Pretty good. Um, so let's get right into it. Uh, so you're observing and sort of being an analyst here. Um, but of course, you, you stood in for um, TSM at uh, what tournament was it? The uh, ESL Pro League. Yeah, that's right. And you did. You performed amazingly. Um, especially that one uh, insane clutch at uh, on Mirage, I remember that. Um, so what's the future for you now? Because you've been on a couple teams, you've stood in for a couple teams, but you're also still, you know, putting yourself out there as a caster, as an analyst. Uh, yeah, well, I have uh, Alphas both as uh, a player, caster, analyst, observing, all those kind of things, and I'm graduating from high school this summer. So yeah, yeah, I'm young. I'm still young. <laughs> o- only 19. People are always in my stream. They're like, "How old are you?" I'm like 19, and they're like, "Nah, no way." <laughs> <laughs> so it's like um, I'm graduating there and gonna take a year off, most likely from studying. And I really need to like sit down and m- figure out what I want to do because I have some decent offers for playing, and I have some good offers for analyzing and casting, and like even full time, part time jobs. It's like. Um, haven't really figured out yet what I want, but I still have some months before I have to decide. So you're most likely going to see me joining a team within the next one and a half, two weeks. So stay tuned for that. Cool, cool. Um, so let's talk a little bit about this um, ESL Pro League thing that got announced. So like 12 teams from both regions, 500K per season. Um, but when they, you know, they kind of announced it in... Uh, like kind of quietly and just kind of said like oh you know may 4th it's starting the league starting and then then they announced the format and then the teams really quickly how do you feel about you know the 12 teams from eu being directly invited well i don't think it's a surprise to anyone who's like following me on twitter and so on that i pretty much disagree as much as much as possible with this decision i mean first of all i got really hyped with the uh, announcement of the new league Mm -hmm. And then the next news was that it was going to start on the 4th of May. And I'm like, how the hell are they going to do that? I mean, okay, you, you want to make the biggest online league with land finals of, of Counter-Strike history. And you're going to like push it to make it as fast as possible. I just think that's very silly. If you're going to do it, you should do it properly. You should uh, like, you can invite, I understand inviting like eight teams yeah. because you want like the promotion, you want the best teams. Mm-hmm. Or like at least the one who has like a lot of value in terms of promotion and like fan base and all that kind of stuff but to invite like flipside without symbol and and other teams like that i just think it's silly um there's so many teams where you can't rank like for me you probably have like seven teams who's like steadily on their positions like from tyson and then above to like virtus pro tsm navi those kind of guys you know that <coughs> they're like sitting in the tier one group for me mm-hmm. and then the tier two group is like 20 teams or something mm-hmm. like going from being number nine to like 25 it's like such packed right now so they should host qualifiers and let the team best teams be there okay so and you know they also announced that top four from eu and top four for from na are attending the offline finals and then here at face it you know you have two two teams from na one team from australia and five teams from eu how do you feel about this kind of these splits i mean do you do you think it should be more EU favored since you know EU is the the stronger region, or do you think it's fair to give you know an even split sometimes? At some point, I want to see like Europe having the like big dominance in terms of attending teams, but on the long term, we kind of need to have a relationship which is kind of fifty fifty. I mean, that's the same for like World Cup in football or something. You you get a specific amount of teams from each region. I mean, it should probably be. I don't know, you should just change the format so there's more European teams because that's also what people want to see, right? I mean, no matter what, you're going to lag out on, on like two or three very good teams from the European region and you might have like one or two American teams where like you know they're not going to stand the chance of even making it into the semis. So that's kind of disappointing. Interested to see about the uh, Keith Stars probably moving into America and playing that league and kind of feeling a bit sorry for the australian guys like immunity showed a decent performance here i mean liquid is a team who would probably get so far in the american and they just got upset by immunity who's like second best best team in australia so that kind of shows like the composure of this league like where we should be and where we could be and where we are sadly probably gonna be 
Yeah, I spoke to Sniper yesterday and, you know, before this result. And he said, you know, he feels kind of shafted a bit that, you know, the entire regions are just being kind of neglected. Um, but le let's move on to sort of the offline events, I guess. Um, these past few weeks, maybe like eight, nine, ten weeks, there there's been an event like every single weekend. Um, how do you just fe generally feel about the like so many offline events at once? Well, I mean, to a certain extent, it's pretty cool, but it also removes a bit of the hype about the events, you know, because there's one every week. So, what does it matter that you miss an uh, event this weekend because there's going to be a, a new one next week with probably the same teams? Like that's how the circus goes at the moment. It's like the same teams traveling around. Kind of could explain why we were able to beat the uh, Virtus Pro with TSM when I was standing. I mean, the last two events or something in a row with the um, with device and then I was in and I feel like maybe it's just because Virtus Pro was kind of burned out they had like six events as you say like in six weeks in a row mm -hmm. and it's mentally very harsh to the players and not being at home not being relaxed I mean people think that you can relax at a hostel room you can to a certain extent but it's, it's just not like the same as being home yeah I think I remember someone a couple of pro players tweeting you know like they just get home for a, like you know, you you take a day after the event, go home, yeah. and then you have one or two days maybe of rest, and then off you go packing again, yeah. flying um, to whoever knows where. But, I mean, these events have kind of just been, you know, small and medium-sized ones, like four, eight teams. How do you feel about that compared to, you know, say, like a Copenhagen Games or uh, other bigger events like that? Yeah, well, the problem is, like, you have, like, a lot of, like, 18 tournaments, and then the majors, which is, like, multiplied, which is 16, is, like, best of one I mean, it's so stupid that we're still at the best of one stage. Like, just imagine this, right? I've been at three majors in Cisco, and I played a total of six maps. <laughs> like, I lost C1-2, C1-2, C1-2. I mean, obviously, we've been underdogs, yeah. but it's like, especially with the veto system as well, it's like, they changed it now. Yeah, they changed it now to, like, a different one, yeah. and even that is still ridiculous. Like, beforehand, it was the upper seed always being able to pick the side as well. So we were in a veto process where the best team could like nearly decide the map i mean they let us veto in the end but since they're the better team they have a bigger map pool so no matter what they'll end out on a good map for them they can pick the side which means that the underdog teams couldn't go for a map like nuke or train at the time because hello you're going to start serious and it's going to be like game over and now you have a situation where it's going to be a randomized map and the other or like the high seed can again pick mm -hmm. so you have to as an underdog you kind of have to remove the ct sided maps because yeah. it's the best of one and, and you could like just fall through so easily so i mean all right so here we go here's my idea for a veto process all right i think it may have been done in a couple of process uh other tournaments so for best of ones we just have veto like ban ban pick pick or sorry ban 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 yeah. but then for best of three you have ban ban pick pick yeah. and then instead of a random third map you ban ban and then the l final map gets picked yeah used here actually and that's really good because what it allows is also the teams to get one of their best maps like in the old best of three so it was ban 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 pick pick and then third and basically it uh, you need to play six maps out of the seven maps to be good because you know that you can veto one map always but on the other one you could always remove double that's also why we didn't see overpass and cover being played in the beginning because everyone was like yeah we'll just remove those two and and maybe one of the other teams is going to remove it as well so like that's why it changed now you know you have a big advantage if you're good at couple and the overpass because they go if you have like a best of three they can remove one of them but you can pick the other one so it's a cool system and i agree with you uh, so i mean the only flaw i see in that system is you know how the sides get picked so i think in face it and maybe star ladder they just decided by knives how do you feel that you know such an important kind of for certain maps such an important decision just gets decided by kind of like a seemingly random thing yeah, it is kind of random, and I kind of, to a certain extent, I would like to see Zeus rounds, actually. <laughs> I mean, I we had it in the early CSGO, and that would be, like, very entertaining. The knife rounds is something where all the commentators, like, you know, the commentators, yeah, don't want to cast, you know, like, I'm too cool for that, bro. <laughs> so it's like, I want to see Zeus or something, you know. But yeah, you, I mean, you're completely right. It's, it's random, but then again, I kind of dislike the system with the um, picking sides and the opponent's map as well. Uh, I don't think there's like a really good solution because flipping a coin again random as well. So 
I mean, at least knife has a certain amount of skill, you know, like there's the trick in Cisco where you can do double left and then run right, which is better than the double right. So people try to use that as much as possible, but yeah, it is random. Okay. Um so I was talking to Statacist and um, you know, all these kinds of issues with the veto system and then the balance stuff with the tech nines at SMGs. Um, we were talking and we were wondering if a potential solution would be a players union. So, you know, it's hard for developers to kind of contact each team separately and try to gather feedback. And it's also hard for them to, you know, say me interviewing you now and giving direct feedback to the Internet. It's hard for them to watch every interview. Yeah. So what do you think of if there was some way to, you know, get a players union where maybe one person from each team is a representative and, you know, they all talk and then they all kind of gather their feedback and then deliver it straight directly to the developers. The biggest problem right now is we have the big data, uh, dictator valve. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, if they want a new map, they get in a new map. If they want to remove a map, they'll remove a map. If they want to change something within the game, they change it, you know. To be completely fair, they're doing a great job, but they're not really listening that much to the people who's at the events. I mean, I had a lot of talks with them and, I mean, I talked about uh, at Katowice. I talked about um, re-adding the um, the price re or money reward for the AWP to 300 because it's been 100 or 50, and then two weeks after they just nerfed the AWP. So like, okay, it's not really like they're listening to me. They really hate. They really hate you. That's yeah, they why they, they, they hate you. exactly. That. And they didn't even put the money reward back to 300 after nerfing. So I was like, ah. And the CZ too. I think the CZ, even though it's been you know nerfed so heavily, I think people. Players who still even use the CZ have said at least give me the 300 yeah, back because exactly. like the gun's not the s that that great anymore. Yeah. And now if I'm buying it like as a force buy or you know as a CT or something, like I might I might as well have a 5.7 because I'm not I'm not even getting any money out of yeah, it. Exactly, that's the same. Like, why should Tech Nine have a, a kill reward when like they remove nearly the entire kill reward from CZ? So they should fix that. And yeah, the general question was about the player union. I mean. We kind of tried to to do something at the last campaign games when they had like single elimination, best of three, right. which was like so off because it was random seedings as well. It's yeah. like, yeah. I don't even know what that plan was, but we tried like, at that time, you know, all the good teams went to campaign games where they destroyed their reputation big time and both in terms of like how to handle tournaments and like the price money not increasing and, and so many things because they were one of the biggest tournaments. and. We tried to do that. We have that group on Facebook, as you might know, like all the top teams is in the same group, mm -hmm. searching for practice every day. And we're like, guys, let's sit down and agree what would the best solution be. And everyone added, blah, blah, blah. We would play best of three, uh, double. And yeah, we s come to the Atmos with like internet signature of like, <laughs> I don't know, the best 20 teams in the world. And they're like, nah, can't do it. It's a sponsored deal. It's like they, d they had time for it, yeah. but they said it was a sponsored deal. It's like, no way that the sponsors doesn't want the teams to be happy and to have more entertainment. It was just like, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I guess that's the tough thing about having, a, you know, like trying to create, just create the concept of a players' union because who's going to listen to you if you don't have, you know, some kind of representative with actual power that can say, like, you know, if you don't change this, we're going to pull six teams out of our your tournament and you're going to yeah. be, like, out of, uh, you know, out of luck. Um, I mean, how how do you think? I mean, so you so you do think it's a good idea? It's it, it's, yeah. it, I mean, it's a you know, it's a possible idea. The idea is good. The only thing is like the players right now would need to boycott events for things actually to change. So if we actually had like a voice to be heard, then it would be fair because like the only time where we would be heard it was w if Valve added the. I don't know, a negative magazine to uh, enforce silence or something, and we, like, refuse to play at <laughs> the next major or something. Then with a, with a $6,000 kill reward. Yeah, exactly. Some something like that, and we'd be like, nah, not attending. They would, okay, guys, let's change it back, you know. But otherwise, they won't really care because they know every team is going to attend anyways. And, yeah, as you say right now, it's like Valve, the organizers, like, fighting for different things, like map, veto system. And the players, like, it's them playing. Like, they should have something to, to say as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe now... You know, now that the season is is sh sh right underway, now's the best time. You know, I mean, maybe maybe next year or something. But 
because there are so many events now, it's not like, okay, we'll miss Copenhagen Games and then we're screwed for, you know, six months or something. Now you can say, like, all right, I'll pass this it may, uh, and I'll see you, like, next week. Yeah. Do you think, like, you know, now c- moving forward, it, could it be a, a viable solution? Mm. I don't know. Like, it's just very hard to say of all. But, yeah, I mean, as you say, it, it is a problem and... There's there's loads of things which could be changed. I mean, also in terms of implementing the new maps and like train, they should like let the professional players like okay, give it to that Facebook group of like the sub twenty teams. Let let them play it for like two days. Let them come with feedback, change that, and then public, uh, make a public announcement about the new map or something like. But uh, I don't know. It seems like they don't really listen. You know, they have their own plans and their own plans is decent for like casual play, but. We all know that one of the big things is stickers and like the professional competition in the game right now. That's why everyone is like joining as well. So, yeah, they need to include us a bit more. Okay, okay, De- that's definitely fair. Um, so let's talk about online leagues. And you know, as a as a pro player now, there's the the super league. How do you decide which leagues to prioritize? Because you know, there's been numerous occasions where teams have to reschedule or there's delays, whatever. How do you pick, like, especially now that there's this huge league that's you know, looming over all the other ones, how do you pick which ones to go for? Well, you rate them in terms of, like, how much promotion is the organization going to get out of it, what is the prize pool, and what is our own chances. And and one of the most essential things is actually, like, how many games are you going to play? Like, no team wants to play in a league where it's, like, 40 games because you can win $2,000. You'd rather play in one with 10 games and 5,000. So you try and go in and say, like, okay, I mean, people don't really want to play the lower leagues. Like, for example, um, the ESA has ESA, ESL partnership has announced a lower league as well where a lot of the new oh, yeah. second side teams is in. And that's, like, pretty unusual because normally, like, it's going to be a lot of games with all those teams in that league and... It's gonna take a lot of time, and what one team maybe is gonna get into the better league? Yeah, so it's like it's a weird system, but people still still seem to to do it, and it's hard. You you just try to. A lot of teams don't have a manager who's like having the overview, mm-hmm. so it's just like, okay, we we can play Thursday, so let's skip this league. And we can play Wednesday. Let's let's try out this league and stuff. And but yeah, teams are dropping out of tournaments, like you say, and. I mean, to a certain extent, it's only good because that means we have a lot of tournaments and everything is just, like, fluent right now. So let's talk a little bit about observing and being a dedicated observer. So before, it was kind of you as uh, the main observer and also Steel, who's now banned. Um, how do you go about, I guess, preparing for observing? And how do you know, you know, which hang- which player to watch and, and stuff like that? Yeah, well, basically it comes from having a lot of in-game knowledge about, like, every time I see something, I can read out, okay, this is most likely going to play uh, be played in this round. Like, they're going to do this strategy and this. And with the way they're approaching the side, this guy should jump out as the first guy. Like, all these kind of things is in my mind. And then I'm sitting with my fingers, like, ready to press all kind of numbers <laughs> and, and just, like, spam through. And you kind of have to guess, guess sometimes because you can't be right all the time. So sometimes you're going to miss action, obviously. And yeah, Steel being banned, I mean, he was a really good observer. Um, and I really think we lack good observers, to be honest. Um, to be honest, it's been kind of poor at, at the recent events. Uh, I have to admit, I, I'm I'm cringing sometimes at home when I'm like when others is doing it. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad that Vendetta is decent as well. And uh, so there is some possibilities, but we definitely need more. And it's a hard thing because it takes insane amount of time to learn if you're not just like good at it the first time like it was very random that i was doing it i, I started the first time at the face at milano finals face at milano finals like i don't know a year ago nearly and so it's like i had to analyze and i think james battle black tdk <laughs> 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 for those of you who don't know who james is um, was doing it and he had to a meeting or something and it's like yeah. uh, can you try and i was like yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah i can try and, and people really liked it they found out how to do the over we third person yeah. Oh, yeah yeah third person kind of things and uh, yeah so yeah that's basically how it is uh, have you seen the pgl um yeah, do, really cool. do you know how they do that sort of like fixed camera stuff nope i mean the thing is i don't know anything about like production right, and yeah. anything but i think it looks really cool and um, sometimes they use it at the wrong times but obviously yeah. you can't be perfect and do it correctly every time but when they hit it it looks really cool like these smooth angles yeah. and yeah looks cool yeah i think 
CS specifically, you know, coming from StarCraft, like where we used to have casters just kind of observe as they cast, CS is, seems near impossible to cast and observe at the same time because, you know, you're, you're trying to look at the map, yeah. you're trying to look at which player is to focus on, and all the while you're talking at the same time. It's like it really, really seems that this sport specifically really needs more dedicated observers yeah. like you, like Vendetta, to, to, to help out. Um, so I guess that's pretty much it. Do you have any last words or shout outs? Just uh, thank you to you guys who is going to watch this video. Thank you for doing the interview with me. You can follow me on Twitter, on Casper Cadian, and the same on my Facebook fan page. Uh, check out. All right. Thank you.